I've got a really good question on Instagram asking me about what EQs I use when I'm mixing my beats or mixing songs. So I thought that'd be a great topic to discuss on EQ types for beginners. So if you're a beginner and you don't know the different type of EQs that you can use when you're mixing your beats, stick around because this is the video for you. What's going on? It's Casey. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're well. Hope you're good. So today's video, EQ types, different types of EQs, just to give you a better understanding of EQs. So the next time you reach for an EQ when you're mixing, creating, you'll have a better understanding of what you're doing. Before we jump into that video, I shout out my two new subscribers. So shout out Kyrie Jerloff and AD Official. Thank you both for hitting that subscribe button. I appreciate that a lot. Hope you've hit the notification bell as well so you get notified for future videos and for this video today, even if you don't want to know about EQs. <laughs> Favorite company this week's coming from J Flow. Wow, a whole mixtape. That's something I'd hate to, to lose all that work. That must, yeah. So yeah, I'm glad to hear that I've helped you, bro. And good luck with the mixtape as well. Drop your link with your mixtape or send it to me on Insta. Won't mind listening to it. See what your music's saying. All right, we've done that. Let's dive into this video. So the human hearing range is from 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz. The older you get, the more you lose the top end of your hearing. So the older you get, the less higher end you can hear. But that's nothing to worry about, it's life. So you've got a frequency spectrum from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, in which you can use an EQ to make each sound that you're using in your mix or your creation to fit together. So with EQ, EQ allows you to, to manipulate the frequency of a sound. But you have different EQ types that allow you to control them in different ways. So that's what we're gonna do now, let's dive in. So the first EQ we're gonna look at is a parametric EQ. So as you can see with the parametric EQ, Logic stock plugin, I'm gonna show you a third party plugin as well. Logic's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different parameters on that EQ that you can use. So you've got your low cut filter, when that's turned on, it's gonna cut the lows of your sound. Some people call it low cut, some people call it high pass filter. If you hear the two different terminology, at least you know what they mean. Low cut, you're cutting all the lows. High pass, you're letting the highest pass through. So that's your first filter. Second filter, you've got shelf, low shelf. With the shelf, depending on where you set the frequency, as you can see, the filter's acting like a shelf, so it's gonna ramp up or down, cutting or boosting the frequency. Then moving on, you've got a bell, and then you move up to the higher, you've got the high shelf. Same sort of thing as the low shelf. Go as far as you want all the way down. I don't know why you would do that, but that's what the sound needs and that's what the sound needs. And then the last one, you've got low pass. So it lets the lows pass through and it's cutting the high, so high cut filter. Now the reason why this one's called a parametric EQ is because you've got all the ability to change and manipulate frequencies. If you're using a bell, for example, you can change the Q, which is the width of the frequency range that you're trying to boost or cut. Normally when you're cutting the sound, you want to go for a narrow band width and when you're boosting you want it a bit more round so it's, it's a bit more smoother sounding but that's not always the case so you just have to use your ears and eyes if you like to use an analyzer but ears most importantly just to see what you're doing and how it sounds with these different parameters you've got the frequency that you can attenuate you've got the gain you can boost or you can cut and then you've got your bandwidth your Q otherwise known as third party we look at Pro Q3, which is my go-to for everything because it's just so transparent and it's easy to use. I like the channel EQ where you've got four bells. You can, yeah, you can slightly get carried away with uh, the Pro Q3 because it allows you to put up quite a few bells. So you can just keep notching and cutting. And So I like to use the Pro Q3 for surgical, which is normally inserted early in my mixing stage just to knock out some frequencies that I don't want to well some subtractive EQ so as you can see this is really flexible more flexible than some of the other EQs I'm about to show you Pro Q3 you got your filters same way you can create a node and then just change the filter but I'm going to do a whole video on how to use a Pro Q3 and how I use it in my mixes because that there is an amazing EQ I love it, absolutely love it. So you've got the SSL channel, which is also, which has a parametric EQ on there as well. The only difference with this is, is there's no visuals. 
you can't see the frequencies that you're manipulating. So this EQ is good, especially if you're trying to learn what you're doing to the sound when you're turning certain knobs and trying to get a sound. So I would say this type of EQ here is great for learning. If, you, if you're more of a visual person like to see where the frequencies need to be cut or boosted, then an EQ like that is cool. But you can still use the SSL channel and just put an analyzer on. You can see analyzer in there. So it's just all down to how you how you like to work. But yeah, at least you get an understanding of the different types. Moving on, we're gonna go to semi-parametric EQ. All that is, is an EQ that's semi-parametric, meaning there's a few functionalities that you can't do the same as a parametric EQ. Let's have a look. So for example, we've got the Poltec. Poltec EQ, lovely EQ, especially for kicks and getting that knock. So with this EQ, you've got set frequencies of what you're boosting. Whereas with the parametric, you can choose wherever you want to go up and down that frequency spectrum. With this EQ, it's been chosen for you. Same with the high end, got 3K, 4, 5, 8, 10, 12, 16. So they're set frequencies. The same with API 550, frequencies are set for you. So if you just want to go in and cut or boost a certain frequency, then this EQ is ideal for you because it's going to limit you from wasting too much time going through, sweeping through frequencies when you don't need to. So this is ideal for that. And plus, with the waves, you're going to get some type of color, coloring to your sound. So you just be aware of that. That's for a whole nother video because it can get deep. But it's, these are things you want to learn and understand. So take the time to understand how these EQs are affecting your sound. Moving on, we've got a graphic e equalizer. This is third party. We've got a graphic equalizer in Logic as well. So with a graphic equalizer, as you can see, frequency bands are already set for you. So it's a case of boosting or cutting that particular frequency. In terms of Q, the higher you boost, the wider the Q becomes, the lower you cut, the narrower the Q becomes. But that's something you need to listen to when you're using these EQs and making your mix decisions. So that's graphic equalizer. You might have seen them in your old hi-fis back in the day. Like I know I, I do. As a kid, I used to love playing some reggae and then like at my mom's parties and stuff. And then when that bass drops, I'll just raise that bass and then, oh, I think that's why I love music so much. Anyway, let's carry on. So then we've got dynamic EQ. For me, my favorite dynamic EQ is the Pro Q3. All that the dynamic EQ is doing is, instead of notching out the sound or boosting the sound, a frequency, sorry, it stops it from being static and just pulling out or boosting the frequency that, that you want. I'll show you. So we create the node. So let's boost the dynamic range of the bass. And we're gonna do that with a bell. So if I want to dull the hi-hats a little, little bit, I don't want to actually take the hi-hats out, I just want to dull them. I can take this, this dynamic range, drop it on the hi-hats. Narrow it. And that's what dynamic EQ does it lowers or boosts the frequency without you having to take it out and make it static so it's just removed completely so it will still be there but if it's too much it'll be ducked and you boost it it will boost it and then just duck when it's too much amazing amazing tool I love that so moving on we're gonna go to a shelving EQ like I explained earlier with using a parametric EQ different filters, low shelf, high shelf. So using this dangerous wax EQ, it's a shelf EQ, allows you to cut the lows, the highs as well, but then you can also boost and lower the low end or boost the high end, but in a shelf and a nice pleasing way. Let's try it on the mix bus. Boost the shelf, low shelf. Saturated. Cut some of that top. 7.5k is too much. Boost this, the shelf. So that's shelving EQ. 
You can do that with a parametric EQ. You can do that with the Poltec EQ, Poltec style EQ. Waves has got a, an EQ similar to that. Uh, even Logic's got one similar to that, which is the vintage console EQ. Okay, so moving on to the last EQ that I want to talk about is mid side EQ. This, this is especially useful if you're you've got a sand and maybe the sides are too got too much high end on it or something and you just want to bring down the high end don't want to bring down the high end of, of the whole sand you can manipulate just the mid or the middle or the sides stereo of that sand i'll show you I uh, and for this i normally use pro q3 again another cool thing about this as well mid side is you can use it on certain sands and start to get a wider start getting a wider sand wider mix instead of using like a stereo imager plugin, which might mess up your beat, your song, your mix, when you collapse it to mono. So yeah, keep that tip in mind. So Pro Q3, mid side. So that just affecting the middle now. Now we put it into stereo mode and see how that sounds. Or side mode. So if I wanted to bring out the pianos and the sides a bit more, I could, I could use that EQ. I could also use dynamic. Dynamic mode boosted some of the sides and pulled out some of the, the mids in the same spot. Possibilities are endless. There's so much you can do with these EQs, but my favorite is definitely Pro Q3, um, being able to just manipulate frequencies as I, as I like. So, quick recap, you've got parametric EQ, semi-parametric EQ, graphic EQ, dynamic EQ, shelving EQ, and mid-side EQ. Find what works best for you in the time that you're creating your mix, you're doing your mix or you're making your beat. Have a play around with them, see how they sound, how they color your, the sound that you're working on. Possibility is endless. It's your, it's your, like I say all the time, it's your art, it's your work. You do what you feel makes it sound good. Ah, oh, I really hope that piece of fluff went on my face that whole time. <sighs> Having an understanding of EQ and the different types will definitely help you when it comes to making your decisions on what EQ to use when you're mixing, mastering, making beats, whatever it is. So I hope this video has helped you. If there's anything you're unsure of, feel free to hit me up on Insta. I'll do my best to answer your questions or just drop a comment below. I'll get back to ya. If you like this video at all, hit the like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified anytime I put up a new video. As per usual, I appreciate your time.